going live. We are live, folks. How's everybody doing tonight? Jeff here, and welcome back to another tool giveaway. Glad you guys, guys all make it tonight here. Let me get our screen up here and see all of the comments that are coming in here so far. And it says here, good evening from Bay Area, California. You guys have your own little disaster going on out there with that tower that's kind of, I don't know, is it leaning or sinking? I forget what it's doing. I haven't even had time to check that one out yet, but man, yep. So Mike Davis says, hey, time to learn more about how the building collapsed. And hello from Coastal South Carolina, says Billy. Okay. Tool Nerd finally showed up. Man, glad to see all you guys, the regulars. And Mike Land is here. He's one of our mods. Thanks for showing up. So, Mike and all the other mods that tune in, I got a, a little request from you guys tonight. You know, we've been inundated with all of these conspiracy theory guys that keep coming in and saying, John McAfee had an apartment there, and the government blew up the condo, and that's why it, it collapsed, and blah, blah, blah. So if you see any of that, just nix them. And all the other, what are the other ones they're saying? Oh, yeah, they're, they're saying, you know, they blew up the World Trade Center, and these are the same people, you know, all sorts of conspiracy crap like that. So just, if you guys see any of that, just, you know, mitigate it for us. And I imagine you're going to probably see a lot of it. They're going to try all sorts of stuff because on the, the three or four videos we uploaded this week, it's like every 10 videos we get a lot of this stuff. Somebody will come in and say, did I see flickering in those balconies there on the lights? Before the building collapsed, I knew it. They blew up the building. It's just stupid. So anyway, I see Ron Bryant says, greetings from England. So anyway, tonight, guys, you saw on the thumbnail some of the tools that we're going to give away. So what I'm going to do is show you tonight what all the tools are. And then a little later in the broadcast, I'll, I'm going to show you how you're going to enter the tool giveaway. And for those of you who have never been here or done that before, the way we do these giveaways is, you you know, I'll, I'll put the links up for you and then you just go and you sign up to each of the tools that you want to have a chance to win and then we reconvene next Sunday night we always meet a week later we give you a week to have time plenty of time to get in there and sign up for the tools and then we randomly choose the winner next week and you don't have to be here you don't you don't have to be live or anything because we just choose the winner and we contact you by email right afterwards, okay? And as usual, and yeah, Just M says, next they say it was the aliens. Oh, I'm surprised a couple of them haven't, uh, maybe, uh, no, no. Nobody yet has blamed it on Trump. I was waiting for somebody to come in and somehow blame it on, on Trump. Um, I've heard every cockamamie excuse. I've heard somebody say maybe it was that Navy boat so you remember they were testing that new aircraft carrier, the Gerald R. Ford, uh, about 350 miles north of us here, and 100 miles offshore. And it, it registered a 3.9, but that was up there. It's not going to have any effect down here, even though people heard it. And Howie says, Jeff, you have a feedback loop in your audio. I wonder how that could be, because there's no speaker here. So, I don't know, does anybody else hear the feedback? Got feedback in the background. Uh, hold on. Are you sure? I mean, I don't hear anything. Maybe if I get closer to the mic, sometimes that helps with feedback if you're picking up any noise. I know they're in the other room watching a movie, but anyway, the audio is echoing, says Wyatt. So is it still going on, even though it's my own audio but delayed? It might be an issue with YouTube. Once on a blue moon, the streams don't go perfect like we hope, you know? And it sounds like a ball game. All right, and up to bat next is Jeff. All right, so since we're having these little audio issues, which do attack from once, once in a while, this is the first item that we're going to show you guys here tonight so this is the dewalt five amp hour batteries i love these these are like my my workhorse ones you know and this is a two pack now when i showed you on the live stream in home depot a few weeks ago these were 189 and i had mentioned that and many of the home depot stores they were on sale that if you bring it up to the cash register they're 149 so um yeah i picked up two of these so there's going to be two lucky winners of these next Sunday night. So here's one of the tools that we're doing. 
Oh, let's see. Here's one of the other ones that we're going to do here. These are the Fiat. I, I always wonder if that's how you pronounce it, Fate or Fiat or Fiat. But these are the smart bulbs. And what's really cool about these guys, these are Wi-Fi light bulbs here. And so you screw them up into your light, and there's an app that you put on your phone, and it talks to them and it registers to them, and you can control them. You can make them dim or bright. You can change the Kelvin color of these, too, I believe. There's a, there's a few different things you can do with these here. And Roll the R says, Jeff, is your computer mic on? Yeah, it is. It's on right now. Let me see. Yeah, it's on right now. In fact, I'm going through the, the thing there. And you should be able to hear pretty good. Are you guys all hearing it? Good. And the dobe says this is bad. Uh, let me see, because, yeah, it's going right into the computer. In fact, I was using it this setup just last night, recording um, the video that we uploaded today. Disco in your room. All right. So... <clears throat> yeah, we're going to be getting a whole new system soon, too. So I don't know if it's an issue between the computer or if it's just YouTube. But I do know that once in a while, and it's only on YouTube when I do it, I've never, ever had audio go bad on a Zoom call or anything else. So it's terrible sounding, says Tucker. But D-Trans says, here you find. Just go in your room. Here you find, but there's delay. Okay, so as long as we can hear it, and it's parsable, and you can discern what I am saying. So here's the next one here, the Milwaukee Gloves. These are extra large, extra large. And Howie says we can hear you. It's just distracting. Yeah, so there's nothing to do to, to control the echo. Let me make sure of what's going on in here. Oh, how about this? Wait a minute. Let me turn off the desktop. Hang on. Audio up. Which one's the desktop one? How does that sound? Let me come back to you guys and see. Does that sound better now? It, it might take a few seconds to get better, but I think that might sound better. I was looking at one of the settings, and it looked like it was trying to draw audio from the computer as well. So, it's different than an Echo. That did it. All right, good. A lot of people saying, yeah. Oh, these are the gloves. These are extra large. So, don't try to get these unless you, you have extra large hands, all right? Tell them large Marge sent you. All right. And by the way, those of you who might be watching this later as an upload, as a video... You can always watch these longer videos in double speed on YouTube. And Dirk Hall just checked in. Dirk Jason Hall with a $5 super chat. He says, hey, buddy, love your content. Great work. I was wondering what air compressor you would suggest for spraying texture out of a hopper gun. I was using, I think any of them would work. I was using my Porter Cable one the, the couple of times that I did it. So um, I forget what, what PSI you want to set it on, but once it starts, you, you get to monitor the little gauge, and once it starts to get to a certain point, you're going to stop and then turn the compressor back on again, or some people just leave it on. You can do it that way too. But yeah, any compressor should do the job on those. And uh, so anyway, what I, what I was saying is uh, you can do it at double speed and you can go, you go down to that gear icon in the lower right hand control of your YouTube window and you click on it and there's a thing that says playback speed and you can change it from normal to 2x. So any video actually, it makes it go by that much quicker there. So your typical OJ gloves, if it, if it don't fit, you must equip. See, so tell them large Marge sent you. There we go. Yeah, these fit here. These are very comfy. I like these. Uh, this is one of the other prizes. I like this little kit. This is, is a 32-piece? 35. 35-piece 35 set. And this is from Cobalt. And what I like about this, I can't open it because it's got one of those little security things on there. But it's a little teeny tiny ratchet that maybe you can see it in here, right? And this is great because this has a whole bunch of different bits like Phillips and Square and Hex and Torx and all that. So if you have to get into a really teeny tiny tight area, I always have one of these in my bag because it, it's so tiny it fits in one of the side pockets. So great little thing to have. Love these. 
Uh, what else have we got? Oh, those of you who are into working on your cars just might like this. Oh, this one here I got off the clearance counter many months ago and just haven't gotten around to listing it yet here as a tool giveaway. But this was originally 50 bucks and it was marked down to 30. And if I'm not mistaken, when I got it up to the counter, I think they only charged like 10. <laughs> So that's the good thing about the clearance there. And Nelson Reese says, from a police officer who worked in the Surfside area, great video. So thank you, Nelson. Thank you so much. So we, we put up that video today. I don't know if you saw it, Nelson, about the security camera videos and why we haven't seen any from the Champlain Towers. Because, you know, everybody thinks, well, it was destroyed. No, no, because the office you know we're down in the lobby there where the security guy sits that was untouched that part of the building is the one that survived that's the part that they dropped last week so they sh those cameras should have still been able to capture video somebody's got the video it's got to be it's either in the cloud or it was in the computers in there and i'm i hope they somehow were able to get them but you know i'd like to get my hands on those some days and I'd like to get my hands on the 911 calls the f that first came in. So some of the, the press sites that I showed in the video were kind of um, bait-clicking people, saying they had the 911 calls, but they really didn't. They had the, uh, the uh, dispatch audio. And DTRAN says, does that have the security bits? Usually you don't find security bits in a thing this small. you got to buy one of those 100-piece. I see a couple... I see, like, the ones that are, like, I consider them security bits. It's the one where it's, like, a star with a hole in it. So those are useful to have on occasion. And since Epps says, love the streams, Jeff, we're pumped. We're only a few months from those fall deals. That is correct. Speaking of deals, especially since it's not costing you anything, we have here the DeWalt Angle Grinder. Now, this is a corded angle grinder this one is normally 129 and i snagged it at um i believe was this at yes it was at home depot i think and it was like 50 bucks it was on the clearance sticker there on the counter 50 bucks so i snagged it here so yeah this is a corded one or is it let me see is this the corded one grinder true oh no i think this is i think no, I'm wrong. I think this is the battery one. I remembered getting a quarter one, or maybe we gave that one away already. See, I got confused already. But yeah, here you go. It's the, the DCG 412B. B stands for bare tool. So there's no battery. So you already have to have a dual battery if you expect to use this guy. <clears throat> and... Yeah, so you guys saw a couple of those super chats come in. So at any time, if you want to uh, donate to the channel, that's what helps us buy more of these tools that you see here. You can click on that dollar sign there at the bottom of the chat window, the dollar sign with the gray square around it, and you can just donate any amount you want. And let's see, what other questions do we have? Okay, yeah, so Richard says, yep, cordless. Um, here's another one. This was a great kit. So this is the DCD 791 P1. So this kit, is this the one with one? Yeah, it comes with a single 5 amp hour battery and a charger and a bag. This is that, do you remember that glitch that they had back in January? And where I told you guys about this? And I went and I got like six of these deals, man. And um, it ended up being 68 bucks for this whole kit by the time you were said and done. Because there was a buy one, get one deal. So a lot of people were were buying um, like one of these and then getting a uh, another tool like a uh, uh, routers, jigsaws. I, I picked up a whole bunch of those and we gave a lot of those away at our previous one. So this was a great deal, man. By the way, on that weekend, when we put the links up and told you guys about this, 1,800 people on the first day bought this kit. 1,800 people. <laughs> And Eugene W. just gave us a $2 super chat. Thank you so much for that, Eugene. And he says, thank you for the giveaways. Yeah, and uh, SurfXP says, this is a good drill for a starter. It really is because it is a, it's still brushless. And it's not the 996. That's the one that I have. And I also now have the 99, uh, 998, I believe it is. The FlexVolt Advantage. 
And, oh, somebody says they got that deal. Richard says, I took advantage of that deal in January. Great deal, yep. That was so incredible, guys. For like three days, and the deal was going all over the place. It would be online, then it wouldn't be, then it would be, then it wouldn't be. People were, it was saying online, it's not in your store, but yet people would drive down to the store and get it. And I kept telling people, go to your store and get it. It's there, trust me. It was just totally bizarre sometimes the way these things work. Ah, oh, yes, the ever-elusive Ryobi 4-inch clamp fan. So this is a tool only, so you already have to have a Ryobi battery, guys, for this. This is one of the most elusive items of this year, mainly because many Home Depot stores didn't get these in. You see? So um, our store, which is the number one performing Home Depot in the region, uh, got, a, like, a bunch of these a number of times and even our store ran out of them and so i think i went up to boca to buy these four just went in there one day and so what's cool about this is you see this clamp on here so you can clamp it on a two by four on a rafter on your ladder and it runs if i'm not mistaken and the, the letters are just way too tiny for me to see i think it runs 60 on a six amp hour for 40 hours on a six amp hour battery so that's a pretty good long time. It'll at least last overnight if you want to put it next to your bed or something on those hot summer nights. And we got here black and gold. Black and gold all day long, folks. And Hawkeye says, yeah, that clamp fan. So we're going to give away one of these. And by the way, the clamp fan, we have four. So there's going to be four lucky winners on those clamp fans next week. And let's see, who else? What other questions do we have related to this? What's kind of useless? The fan? Okay, the next one we have is, this is that S-Wing, this is the 19-in-1 ratcheting, uh, it's like screwdriver bit kit here. So this thing comes with like eight different uh, double-sided bit shanks that you can stick in there. So, <clears throat> Harold says, how do I enter to win? Well, fairly soon I'm going to show you guys. I will post the links. Well, we, we kind of changed it up a little tonight. We wanted to make sure that people were staying on the video longer, which helps our average watch time, before we gave it out. And Carol Long just gave us a four ninety nine super chat. Thank you so much for that. So every little bit helps, folks, because, you know, all of these tools, they cost money. And we always try to get these on clearance. We, we look for those really hot deals. You know, that, that DeWalt drill kit that I just showed you, we would not have really been able to get it otherwise because it was like, I think, 149 normally. And what else have we got? I don't know if we got through everything already. Yeah, we went through quite a bit here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different... Things here that will keep you guys busy. And uh, Ashok says the Milwaukee links are jumbled up. You may want to fix them later for your work. Which Milwaukee links are you talking about? So let me grab, I'm going to grab all of these now. And I'm going to put this into our source code for the page. So when the video is over, if you want to, or the stream, if you want to go ahead and refresh the page, it will show you the links. I'll tell you when they're going to be in there. They are in there right now as we speak. And, okay, so Lanchar says, yeah, the 998 is the power detect. So the 999 is the one that I got. That's the, the flex volted vintage. The 998 is the one they sell over at uh, Lowe's. And let's see. Now, in terms of the videos, I don't know if any of you guys have seen all of the videos we did in the past week on the collapse of the condo. You know, make sure you check those out. Did we have one that's called like uh, how it? What? Let me see the name. Like I forget the exact title of it already. But we were doing our analysis of how it it collapsed. So. Yeah, here's the cause of the Miami condo collapse, Champlain Condo Towers. So that's the one you want to see. And then after that, you want to come by and look at the one we uploaded yesterday, where we it's the analysis of the garage video before the condo collapse. So what happened, guys, was last year um, this lady was 
touring the Champlain Towers with a real estate agent. She was going to buy unit number 611, which I guess she ended up not buying, but went down into the garage there, and they were just filming as they went through the garage trying to find this space, number 17, assigned to that unit. But she didn't realize at the time the wealth of very important intelligence that she gathered while she was in there. And in fact, going through it yesterday, what I discovered was I think I've narrowed down the exact spot on the ceiling in the garage where the ceiling caved in. And so we're going to be working on a video for that tomorrow. I don't know if it'll be up by tomorrow night. It's it's just really, really difficult working on these these videos and getting all the little bits and pieces and the research and going back. I have You guys, a lot of you commented on my first video last week that it was the most number of open tabs you'd ever seen on somebody's computer. <laughs> I think there was about 30 of them because I have to keep going back and forth between the floor plans, between their engineering report, go back to the floor plan, go to the, the parking lot plan, and, and, and it's just a lot of back and forth and then rereading more engineering re reports, you know. But so uh, VVLMM says, has your theory evolved since the video? Not, not really, but what, it, what has evolved since the video is the exact location. So the original five pillars that I circled are not the five that I thought they were. I'm going to be showing in the video where I'm moving it, and then I'm going to show which pillar collapsed first. And then I'll show you how we, we get to that. So uh, one, of, one of the things that, uh, that's supposed to happen, and you guys all know this, if any of you guys are doing remodeling and you've seen any of our remodeling videos, you know that when you're doing a shower pan in, the, in your bathroom, you have to plane it down, right? It's gotta have a slope. Everything slopes in the middle towards the drain. And those guys that do the mud deck under the, your tile there, there, there's an art and a science to that where they have to almost make it look like a nice round cone where it just goes perfectly down into that drain in the middle there. And then they're supposed to put uh, waterproofing over it, and then if anything leaks down, it goes into the weeping tiles there. You know, the little They put these little rocks in there. So a similar thing is supposed to happen on that pool deck. Now, an engineering report that came out in 2018 when that, that main engineering company came in and looked at the place, I think the guy was wrong. He said the architect made a mistake and that the the plans didn't show the pool deck being being planed but i think he was wrong because i have the exact page on the 363 page floor plan that shows that deck was planed down to the drains so the water should be able to make its way down there right and mountain property says hey jeff shout out from los angeles awesome so um, the problem is, is when you have possible water under the water proofing underlayment on that deck, if it starts to wear down, they have a, a finite lifetime. And I don't remember if it's five years or 10 years. I, mean, I just don't know what product they use. And I'm sure they have much better products now than they did back then. But if you have any opening whatsoever in that waterproofing and you have all that rain coming down the deck, right of the the pool there that water is going to get in between the bricks so don't forget your bricks are about this thick i don't know if they're using the one and a quarters or the two and the and three eighths inch but either way you've got these paver bricks water's coming down in between all of those thousands of bricks all the way around the deck so now you have a vertical distance of water now it's getting through there and it's it's landing in the sand that might be an inch thick it might be a quarter of an inch thick if it's on top of concrete. So there's your, your problems there is now you have that added weight. You have that added weight with water and the water is going to sit and collect in the sand. So now you're going to sit on top of this concrete underlayment this you know, below you. And over time, that water leaches in. So everybody's talking about, well, you got salt water, you got leaking pool water. Well, we don't know that there was any leaking pool water that got in there. We just know that maybe salt water but we're still not sure my money says it was just nothing more than rainwater that got down in there soaked into the concrete and people think that concrete is safe but it's not it's like a, a slab like this is like a sponge water gets into the center of it what do you think happens actually it doesn't even have to get to the center that rebar 
is anywhere from one to three inches inside the, the, the slab there, right? Once it gets to that rebar, the rebar rusts. Once the rebar rusts, it expands and it makes the concrete crack and just go poof like that. And so that's what makes, that's what they call the spalling. And so the only way you can control that is to keep the water from getting down into that slab in the first place. So I've been telling people for years, you know, about, you know, if you don't tell water where to go, it will make up its own mind, right? And when it makes up its own mind, it always picks the most expensive path. And sometimes it picks the most deadliest path. And some people were saying, well, what about Hurricane Andrew? Well, I don't think they got a surge big enough from Hurricane Andrew. Um, it was too far south, the eye of the storm. So we don't know. So what's the advantage of concrete versus steel? I, I think steel might cost more money. But, you know, you got to understand this concrete and slab architecture has been used in South Beach and in Miami for 100 years with success. It's, it's just a, a good way to go. Some of the things that I'm not so sure that I like about the way they did this particular design on this building was the way those columns in the garage just come straight up and flat. It's a flat slab design. So the slab just comes, you know, well, it's actually, they're tied in together, right? Like this, like a T. But I don't, I'm not a big fan of that design because you can get punched through shearing, which is what we saw. Remember, once that deck collapsed, you had all of the, the columns were sticking up like this. And I didn't like the fact that each of those 16-inch columns only had two rebar sticking out of them when I feel a lot better with four rebar sticking out of them. I think you have a, a better design. But even then, garages are notoriously prone, folks, to collapsing like that. This isn't the first garage that has ever done that. There's lots of garages that have failed. Um, probably don't make the headlines if nobody got hurt. But the best way to mitigate that shearing, that punch through shearing, guys, is when you have your column going up to the, to the slab, you got to have that crown there at the top that widens out. And then it's got to get into a beefier pad on the bottom of the slab. So, yeah, you make you wonder, how did the Romans do it all those years ago? How did the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which looks like this now, it's still standing. It hasn't crumbled, you know? So, Musical Gamer says, Jeff, I really liked how you pointed out how the small columns are. Yeah, seems like a defect from the beginning. And a lot of people were saying, oh, no, that's only in the garage. No, when you pull up the floor plan and look, you can get it right off the city of Surfside's website. They were very proactive right from the get-go about putting all of these documents on there. You can get the engineer's report from 2018. You can get the uh, minutes from the HOA, the Homeowners Association meeting in, in 2020. Now, a lot of people, I was getting a lot of questions from people that, that, that uh, let me just answer this question from Jim Jules says, is there a way you can test concrete remnants to evaluate the quality? Yes. And that's probably what the NIST guys are going to do. They're going to go around and they're going to take several samples of concrete, have them analyzed for their structure, and they can tell you if the mixture was done right when the concrete was made. They're going to be slicing through some of these columns and doing core samples and they're going to be looking at the rebar and seeing if the, the metal was correct on the on the rebar when it was even built. So back in those days, in the 80s, I was never a fan of the way they just dropped the rebar off and it sat there on the, you know, on the on the site and it sits there and getting rusty. You know, before they even put it into the concrete, it's already rusty. And I'm like, is that good for it? I mean, does that start a chemical reaction that just keeps going? I don't know. Um, but I know that nowadays we use, they use like a, a epoxy coated rebar, which should buy you more time. But even then that's not all that perfect either because epoxy coated rebar can still have little voids in the epoxy where it missed and then water has a chance to get at it. So yeah, um, even though the engineer walked into that garage three years ago and he was, you know, he didn't like what he saw, and he put it in the report. You need to get this fixed soon. Um, I can't imagine there's an engineer anywhere that would walk in there right now and see that garage and say, oh, yeah, this is going to come down. It, it, you know, it looks like some stuff doesn't look right. But I think before today, none of us thought would have thought that it was going to come down. Obviously, even the engineers and the contractors that were working on it 
um, even up until f a few days before the collapse. They didn't see anything that, that caught them. Uh, Kimberly Jude is asking, where are the links? So if you refresh this page that you're viewing right now, the links are in the video description. And Detrans says, especially with the salt air. And yeah, um, one thing I was going to point out on one of my other videos this coming up this week is you don't even need the salt air. All you need is humidity that we have here in Florida. So I have a, a condo um, six miles inland from the ocean. And I bought it in 2007 when it was brand new, okay? Brand spanking new. By 2014 when I sold it, I was already noticing cracks on my patio and on my neighbor's patio. I told the HOA about it. And sometimes you get a good HOA. Sometimes you get one that's just run by somebody that has no clue what they're doing and then you're screwed so i was glad to get out of there when i did but after this collapse i said hmm i'm gonna take a ride over there and i went over there and i shot some video shocking shocking video of cracks at the top of the the staircase where the railing goes into the concrete and that's a common mistake point so if any of you have an apart if you live in an apartment building that has like outdoor staircases like this one, go and check on every one of your landings where the railings attach into the cement. Because a lot of times when they bury it in there, they never add any silicone or sealant or anything to protect it from water getting in. And then they don't paint over, you know, to, to really complete the seal. You know, the water's not going to get past the, the paint at all, you know? So, Fax says, is it known if they used less rebar than what was required according to code at the time? That we don't know. Um, I did, the, um, they mentioned on the news the other day that they started interviewing more and more engineers. Uh, right after the collapse, you know, some of the engineers that they interviewed didn't want to give a reason. I guess they didn't want to go out on a limb. I don't have know what their reasoning was, but now they're starting to talk. And now, uh, they mentioned the other day that a couple of them are saying the same thing that I'm saying, which is coming out of those those sheared off columns where the pool deck was. They're only seeing two pieces of rebar, and they don't like that. The other thing that I noticed that I'm going to mention in the video, if you look at all of these pictures from whatever angle of the, the pile, the big debris pile, and wherever it's separated from the building, all I see is long, long strands of rebar, right? Just everywhere, hanging out everywhere. And it's picked clean. It reminds me of like when you eat a fish and you're done and you got this empty skeleton sitting there. And that's, what makes that surprising to me is, is if there was a collapse, shouldn't there be chunks of concrete all over these, these rebars? I mean, anywhere. Like they're all clean. Just look at the pictures. Next time you see it, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. Rebar has this texture that goes around it, and it's made to increase the, you know, the area, the square, whatever you want to call it, square inches of the, the radius, you know, the circumference, rather, all the way around. And so it's supposed to help it stick to the concrete better, but the concrete just came clean off. So I wouldn't be surprised, folks, if we hear them come back and say there was something wrong with the concrete and it wasn't adhering right, or maybe it disintegrated or, or got weak or something like that. So one of the things I'm going to point out in the, in the next video is down in the garage when the engineer came in 2018 and looked at it and said, oh, man, I see these cracks all over the ceiling. Some of those cracks had been repaired by, I'm going to say, like a handyman, not like a contractor who specializes in that. And so they gr they injected the, not grout, um, the epoxy injected the cracks, filled them up, and left the injection tubes in the ceiling, folks. Not good. You're supposed to remove all of those, fill everything in, sand it down, paint it, you know, do it right, prime it and paint it. And, of course, none of that was done. And so new cracks started forming from the old cracks and the old repair sites. And then they had... Uh, stalactites coming off the ceiling so when you have stalactites coming off the ceiling that means you have water dripping down through those cracks which means you no longer have a waterproof slab that means the slab is now compromised and you got to get rid of that slab you got to start all over and start doing some fixing to it that's why you need to inspect 
your waterproofing system out there on these decks to make sure that they are indeed still intact and, and working, right? Now, I did see uh, there was a couple of questions that came in back here a second ago. Chris, Krista Simon says, take another look at the aerial photo from your video earlier today. Much water damage around the area drains on the patio level. Yeah. And I showed, I don't know if it was on, I think I showed it on this video today, was uh, when you look at some of the aerial photos from the real estate agents, you can see a lot of big areas of staining around that pool deck. And some of the real estate agent pictures where they were staining on the pool deck, taking pictures for their ad, it looked like certain parts were wet, like, like, like a little bit of water was just pooling there, just a teeny bit on certain areas over there on a day that it's not raining and the whole rest of the deck appears to be dry. So that's got me wondering if those bricks weren't just getting saturated with water and just holding it and maybe it wasn't going anywhere. I don't know. Um, I don't think when the architect designed this whole thing that it was designed with the bricks. I think it was probably just a cement slab. Back in the early 80s like that, everybody's pool decks were just cement. That's all you had. So the idea of putting all of these pavers and stuff in came in um, later on. So, yeah, um, we saw a lot of suspicious things from some of these photos. And then right in the area where the deck collapsed, I noticed they added a drain. It's in the pictures. It's in one of my pictures that shows looking straight down from the top of the building in this little tiny courtyard area that's maybe 20 feet by 10 feet, right, right near the planters. And... Uh, they added a drain that wasn't in there in the architect's drawing. So something happened later on. I don't know what was done later on. That's, that's all I know. Um, so when that engineer did the report back in 2018, he presented the findings to the Homeowners Association and told them it would cost $9 million to get everything fixed. And so, of course, everybody's first response is going to be to balk at it and you know what i've been in that situation before because i've owned numerous condos and properties i'm not trying to necessarily you know condemn or promote the hoa the homeowners association or the board of directors but this dilemma comes up all the time on a much cheaper scale Every, uh, let's see the last four condos i owned we all got hit four times in a row with a five thousand dollar roof assessment so when it's time to replace that roof every 15 years and you better be budgeting for it or you're going to be paying an assessment so they let you pay it off over time because they take out a loan to get to get that work done but you can see you know five thousand dollars is a lot for people that are already struggling to make ends meet and get and get their monthly payments on their condo and but this condo association at Champlain Tower South was already spending a couple of hundred thousand dollars in um, assessments on, I forget what it was, they had some other major projects that they were working on there. And then along comes this, this lands in their lap. And it would have been $60,000 per unit. Now, can you imagine just sitting there and all of a sudden one day, boom, you're told you got to come up with 60 grand? So you can see why there was a lot of fighting over it, and, and is it something we need to do now? You know, blah, blah, blah. So long story short, 2020 rolls around, and they're doing their 40-year certification. That's a law that came out about 10 years ago here in Florida where now they want to, every 40 years, you have to make sure your building is safe. So they were in the middle of doing that. So a lot of people are right now blaming the HOA, saying, well, they didn't do anything. They, they certainly were. And last fall at one of their meetings, they were presented with the findings where they went around and took core samples at the, the they drilled right into the deck at the pool. They drilled into the deck over by the driveway. They, they drilled all around the property at certain key areas to, to test the soil and the concrete and everything else. And they, they seem to indicate that they found that in the parking deck on, that, on the ground level there where there's those 20 cars where you saw like some of them kind of came down towards the pool. That's the area where they found that they think there was no waterproofing underlayment put there, which is bad. That's like one of those really bad oops moments. And that's why if you look at the video yesterday where we were going around in the garage and we found all the puddles all of those puddles are directly under that area where those cars park so to me there's no that wasn't a surprise at all there 
And Ralph A. says, you are doing better than the media reporting on this. You should be on 60 Minutes. That was cool. You know, the one day I went down there and, and filmed from the, the street right in front of the building, um, I saw CNN was there, Anderson Cooper and Dr. Sanjay Gupta were there. Right next to them was David Muir in his tent. I saw Shepard Smith, um, Lester Holt. So was, they brought out the big wigs on that, that first day that I was there. And Surfix says they used beach sand. I think they use a sand that's finer than beach sand. And they sell it at Home Depot. You go there and you get the bags there. I believe they just get sandbox sand. So it is kind of a finer mix. And you would think there should be concrete still attached to the rebar, says Just M. Yeah, so that's what we were talking about earlier. And the other thing, too. You'll see in my video in the garage yesterday where when you see us looking out the garage towards the like the pool deck, take a look at you'll see a whole bunch of stripes going across the ceiling. And those stripes are where all the rebars came out and peeled right out of like like butter and clean. You can see them all laying there on the floor. I'm like, what in the world? Not a bit of concrete on any of them, you know? And let's see, we just got a $10 super chat from Ron Crow. Thank you so much for that, Ron. That helps out a lot. Hey, my buddy Gene is here. Gigi goes keto. Great job on the videos, Jeff. I was just with Gene at Costco earlier tonight. We were filming um, some stuff for his channel. He does like keto cooking and like well, what are the good foods to get and stuff like at Costco and other stores. So yeah, make sure you check out his channel, Gigi goes keto. Good channel. He's got some good, beautiful photographic meals that he cooks on there, too. And, oh, somebody says here, this, uh, the security guard was Shamoka Furman. How did you know that? That's cool. What? Was she, what do you mean, set up for her? I heard that the security guard was a man. So one of the ladies in the, uh, one of the survivors was in her first floor apartment. She hears some banging or creaking in the building at about 1 a.m. And so she's like, wait a minute, are they doing construction in here? They shouldn't be doing construction. And then um, all of a sudden she sees her living room crack, like a crack open up in the wall. She goes, oh man, runs out to the lobby. She says she's talked to the security guard and told him, um, what's going on? Are they doing construction? And he says, no. And then supposedly they both witnessed the garage fall down. So that's when she told him, set the alarm, turn on the alarm, the fire alarm, and call 911. And supposedly, according to her, he didn't remember the address of the building. Ugh. You know, I'm just, just you're crazy. So I don't know if he actually did set off the alarm. That's why I was trying to find out, like, who really is this person? So, um, and as far as I know from another witness, that person, the security guard, helped another person escape and said here follow me let's go this way so um anyway that one lady she ran back to her apartment got her kids and they ran up the street four blocks without stopping and the condo collapsed behind them as they were running up the street so that was an incredible story of just barely getting out of there you know and let's see somebody said watching from louisiana i had it and i lost it there Another one, uh, Darwinism. Hi, Joanna Claire from Boston. Oh, here we go. Christina Sullivan says, I've been on keto for over two years, lost 80 pounds, and no longer take my diabetes medicine. Hey, that's awesome. So that's good. That's one of those cases that's controlled by diet, you know. And so Surf XP, is that how you pronounce it? Surf XP? Those rebar were a half inch into the concrete. That means they were basically on the bottom without spacers. Yeah, and that, that's a good point that you bring up because I've seen a number of times in the past where people will fail their concrete inspection for a sidewalk or a foundation slab. Like here in Florida, we're supposed to put Visqueen plastic down, a big old sheet of it down as a vapor barrier so that your foundation can't soak up water from underneath. So you put the plastic down first, then you lay down your, your grid of where you're going to put your rebar but it's not supposed to touch the ground and i can't tell you how many people set it down right on the bottom on the visqueen and then when the inspector comes he's like duh he, and they fail the inspection and if you guys watch that pool show what was it called pool kings that, that i used to see it on tv a couple of years ago 
um, they got because they use subcontractors. So one of their subcontractors on the show, um, they had a stop work order because their rebar was done all wrong, you know. So Brayer Jr. says, let's get the security camera footage. I hope we can get to somebody who's got some power that can get us that footage there, you know. Or at least give us the password into the cloud, wherever it's stored, if it's stored in the cloud, which I hope it is. But I want to get that one camera that's out there on the pool deck that would have been aimed right at the area where the pool deck collapsed. And that would have told us quite a bit. And let's see. Concrete works for a while. Good luck with your kidneys, keto folk. Yep. So, I don't know. Mike Fingerard, wait, somebody said um, that she helped people get out. But I thought it was a he. So, is it a he or was it a she? Because we're getting conflicting stories here. And guess who just showed up, folks? Our good buddy Shaka. Shaka Gillis. And now this is new from Shaka because he's normally a major supporter of Ryobi Tools. But he says tonight, good evening, Ryobi Tools are trash. Wait a minute. Even this? Where's that thing at? Go ahead. Enter this one, Shaka. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling lucky. Maybe you'll win this one. I think you'll like this one. This is, this is one that everybody's really liking these days. Oh, man. So Shaka is our resident naysayer. So just like in any club or, or board of directors, you know, you always have to have a dissenting vote. So he is our Ryobi naysayer. And S.A. Congo says, in the 80s, the inspectors would leave with an envelope. Yeah, there you go, with an envelope. And suddenly, everything passed. Yeah. Well, something that's interesting about this, a lot of people said, well, you know, that penthouse was added later. And interesting, the penthouse is in the plan. So I don't know if they built it without the penthouse in there, right? And then maybe added it, like, right at the very end. But I do know that originally, the, they told them to stop. And then they got a variance issued to them. And then a lot of other people were saying, oh, yeah, that was all mob back in the 70s. Those were cocaine cowboys and money and blah, blah, blah. Well, as far as I know, this guy, this builder was not connected to the mob. He was a lawyer from California. And I think where people are trying to turn it into the mob was because on some of his other businesses that he had on the side, he didn't file his taxes in Canada. And so um, he eventually went back to Canada, turned himself in, and then ended up paying, I think, some money or something like that. But the fire was from the couches, curtains, carpets, cupboards, says Pooh's Blustery Day. But you're forgetting what else the fire is from because it came from way down on the bottom in the garage. Some of the cars caught fire, too. And when I was there, the day that it was burning the worst, and oh, was that brutal. It smelled like the worst house fire you've ever been to. You could smell a lot of, like, the wood and stuff burning. Once in a while, you'd smell maybe like the tires burning. So, yeah, it was pretty brutal there for about an hour until they got the, the water. Yeah, they, they were spraying water on it for two days. So that's why, you know, they were. Uh, this is why I say I thought that the city folks, you know, all of the, the politicians there were kind of leading the people on, thinking like they're, your family has a chance because with those fires there coming out of the bottom of that rubble, even if you survived the pancaking you would not have survived that i was standing two blocks away behind all the ropes everything was roped off and two blocks away man i was dying for that hour and a half but can you imagine being right there at, at ground zero and let's see i'm gonna have to go back through this and like check out that name and and of the security guard and see if that's real because i was t in the stories on the news they said it was a guy and a lot of people, like, I got hundreds of comments on that video that yesterday and the other one about that Toyota Supra. Did you guys all see the picture I had in there of that Toyota Supra that was in there and flooded? And a lot of people were lamenting that. No, not the Supra. Not the Supra. So, yeah. Um, Quipson says, I didn't hear any car alarms going off. They may have gone off and then stopped. You know, they may have gone off at first. Um, remember, when you have 10 or 12 stories worth of stuff piled down on top of you, the sound is not likely to get out, even from the very, very bottom. 
Oh, where's the link for the fans, says somebody. Let me see. Did I have it on there? Bum, 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 bum. I will have to put that link on there right after we uh, finish this live stream in a, in a few minutes there. I'll make sure I get that link up for you guys. I'll add it to the bottom of the list. And <clears throat> Jim says, I am a Ryobi only fan, and I do think the link is missing. Yeah, yeah, it is. So I will get that link to you guys there. And why was there any pocket of space under the rubble for the survivors? Well, when a building pancakes and you have all of that weight from all of those slabs, it's going to come right down and just flatten everything. Now, a lot of people are going to think, oh, it's going to land on the refrigerator and that'll prop it up at an angle like this and there'll be a giant void, you know. People were expecting, oh, we're going to get through that pile and there's going to be 100 people down in the garage playing poker, you know. Nope. I saw that first live photo at 3.30 in the morning. I just happened to be up when the story broke. And I saw, you could see it, it looked like a package of bacon. You know how bacon looks? It's like this, 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 this. And they're all touching. And I'm like, I don't see any voids. So that slab is going to come down. It's going to crush your refrigerator down to nothing. It's going to crush your counter down to nothing. There's nothing that's safe there. Ralph says, are the plans public records? So yes, I was wondering how you were able to acquire the info. I got friends, man. I got friends on the internet. <laughs> so the first thing I did the next day after that was I got onto the city of Surfside, or it's a town. I got on the town of Surfside's website, and I said, I wonder if there was any building permits. I was just going to look for building permits just to see what was going on. And I was very surprised and very happy to see that they took the initiative. And by that morning, they had already created a section on their website for the disaster. And it's like, here's all the links. Here's the 1979 floor plan and everything's in PDF. So I was surprised that even from 1979, they had that 363 page floor plan, which I spent most of the week just till three in the morning going through every page of that, going through that engineer's report, going through the 2020 recertification. And so they had already started that work. And the in April, you can find the letter too. There's an April letter of this year from the president to the, all the homeowners telling everybody, look, we're going through with all of these fixes. It's got to be done. We can't put it off any longer. And, and it, the price jumped from 9 million to 16 million. And by the way, the newspapers are reporting it wrong. They're reporting it as 15 million, but it's 16 million because they all forgot one important fact. They left out the engineer's commission charge, whatever you want to call it. And his charge is about a million bucks on, on top of everything else. Um, and so they secured a loan in March to cover these repairs. And they were going to start having all of the units pay over time, you know, like a, like a standard loan. So, yeah, there is a lot of good info in these documents, folks. Um, when you read through some of these, like the Homeowners Association meetings, and you see some of the shocking photos that were put in that engineer's report from 2018, it's like, wow. But again, like I said, there's not a person in the world that will walk in that garage and think it's coming down tomorrow. But now, in hindsight... And wait till you see what I have stored up for you guys in the next video, and probably tomorrow or the next day. But the stuff that I saw of where that made me think this is where it fell is just, it's just mind blowing. The stupidity of things that were done in there, um, just total handyman special. Um, I showed in that video in the garage yesterday that they had a water they had a bucket on the floor. But it's not going to catch that water running down the wall because the bucket was away from the wall because there's a curb there. And I'm like, oh. So just, you know, Band-Aids put everywhere, you know. And just like JMC Enterprise says, that's what I mentioned in that video that we launched this afternoon. We need those 911 calls, folks. Go check out my video that I uploaded today. And make sure you watch the one in the garage and the other one on the root cause from last week. And concrete weighs 150 pounds per cubic foot, so 5,500 pounds per cubic meter. That's why the likelihood of anyone being alive is small. Yeah. Your best chance for survival would be if you were out on your patio, like on 
the 11th or 12th floor, you know, your, your top two floors, maybe. The kid that survived was on the, believe it or not, he was on the ninth floor out on their patio, and they got thrown down to a fifth floor level somehow, and he was in the rubble. Uh, he survived, and his mother right next to him didn't, so inches matter in, in a situation like that. Yes, and yeah, BRN MCC01 has it right on the, hit the nail right on the haze. says the 2020 Morabito stuff is way more telling. Yeah, the 2018 is three years ago. And three years ago in his report, he says, if you don't fix this now, it's going to spread exponentially. That was his exact words. And you fast forward to 2020 and it has already spread exponentially. Um, lots of spalling on a lot of the the uh, patios, people's patios and slabs. I'm not as concerned about those because they don't really affect the, uh, you know, the stability of the building, in my opinion. Uh, Richard Croft says, imagine how many other structures in the U.S. have similar damage that we don't know about. Well, you're, I'm going to show you my old condo, and it's only 14 years old, and the, those cracks that you're going to see are going to blow your mind. I, I took uh, some video where I zoomed in really close on somebody's patio slab and you can see both rebars sticking out of the outside of that and, and i'm like oh gosh that looks so scary and it's all rusted and everything um, and the other thing too when you see that little bit of damage of that little bit of rust just keep in mind there's a lot more that goes way down that rebar rod that's why a lot of times they have to clean out quite a bit of that concrete before they can make the repair you know it's like a cancer you know, if you have cancer, you might see a lesion on your skin, but you know that it's already gone to your lymph, lymph nodes, your liver, your kidney, it's all over the place. And that's sort of what happens with these. So the damage is much further than you think. And what other questions do we have on this? And BRN says, in all I can see from the core samples, they added a lot of concrete overlay and sand pavers, et cetera, yeah. So we don't know if any calculations were made to support the sandpavers or not, does it matter? Will that concrete, is it designed to hold it to begin with? Um, it probably does. I just don't know. I wasn't there when they made the calculations. I don't know anything about how to make those calculations. But certainly the weight of the bricks, the weight of the sand. Sand weighs a lot too, folks. Don't forget that. We don't know how much, how thick they laid that sand down. But you have bricks, you have sand, and you have wet sand, you know, whenever it rains. So th that's the, the problem that they are fighting with that. And had they simply put capitals on those columns, I'm willing to bet that wouldn't happen. So people are probably wondering, well, how, how can that deck collapsing pull down the whole building? So when the deck collapses, if you pull on the right column and it pulls that column forward and shears, that's it. You lose that one column, that's enough to make part of the building start to come down. And once it comes down, it starts to pull the rest down with it. It's just a domino effect. And Jim Jules just sent a $5 super chat. Thank you so much for that. And Jim says, I had no idea I'd geek out over tools and concrete analysis. Yeah. Thank you for your knowledge. And, you know, in a way, even though it's sad that I was very sad, I was very depressed to know that 159 people are dead in that pile while everybody's out in the press conferences. They're like patting themselves on the back. This guy's doing a phenomenal job. That guy's doing a phenomenal job and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm sitting back thinking to myself, you know, if somebody was doing a phenomenal job, we'd be pulling live victims out of the rubble, you know. You, know, you, you congratulate yourself afterwards, not, not before, you know. Um, but, but the one good silver lining on the cloud here about this is that now, hopefully, people are going to see and the average layman can now be able to go into their parking garage or walk around their condominium building and look because a lot of times the homeowners associations, the presidents or the board of directors will have their head in the sand. And sometimes it's up to you, your fellow residents, to speak up about it. And now, um, I don't know if you guys heard, so the city of Miami condemned a building um, last week and came in and kicked all of the residents out of it. And uh, I think they came in and were able to say these, these cracks are okay, and I think they were going to let them back in. I'm not sure what the result was on that. 
So they've already had a number of buildings that have been um, proactively, and, and you'll hear them say on the news, out of an abundance of caution. <laughs> I love that term when they say that. You know, so they're, they're starting to evacuate people. Um, do you, if anybody has any, any other questions about the, the collapse, type it in here and uh, let us know. And maybe there's things we can incorporate into the next video to help answer that. Because chances are, if you have a question, a lot of other people do. There was probably a dozen different categories of questions that I was just answering the same thing over and over and over again. I just typed out in, in Word and I kept cutting and pasting the different responses into the comments for people. And let's see. Uh, Pooh's Blustery Day says, why the lapse in repairs? $15 million loan. Well, like I said, they didn't have much money. Uh, I mean, they did have, they have like 900 grand in their, in their reserves, okay? And they were supposed to be using it for these other projects that they were working on at the time. Now they've shelved those and they were taking that money out and they were going to mix it with the money they got from the loan to start their projects. Unfortunately, it is just the two schedules didn't coincide. The collapse of the building happened before they could get into the meat of it. One other puzzling thing now, you guys know that they were already starting to do the roof repair. And by the way, Fuyu just sent us a $5 super chat. Thank you so much for that. Um, they just started the roof repair. And, I, you know, roofs have a, a life expectancy of 15 years. That's a, a membrane roof on top, flat membrane that's planed into the drains. And I was kind of... I know why they did it. They started the roof first because hurricane season's coming up and they wanted to get it out of the way. But I'm thinking that these engineering fixes down in the garage were a much higher critical priority to get fixed first. They should have at least started to bring in some of the shoring to put up in the garage. But you know what? The shoring may have still, the floor probably could have just punched right through the shearing if, uh, I'm sorry, the floor could have punched right through the, the shoring that they would have put in place if the, if the slab is weak enough and it just crumbles around it. So, but, but yeah, I was kind of puzzled as to why they would have made that decision when, uh, and I, I guess the engineer was on board with it, but again, you know, not trying to blame or, or condone anybody either way. Um, you, you know, you're trying to put yourself in that mindset that who the heck in a million years would have expected that this building is going to collapse, you know, today. You know, everybody probably thought, okay, we have time, we're, and we're on it. We're doing it, you know. We're doing our 40-year certification. So, and then Aaron Davis says, how do you win the prizes? If you go look down into the video description below, Aaron, we have all of the links down there for you to go and enter them individually. And I'm going to put the Ryobi fan one in here as soon as we get off of the call here. Oh, yeah, and Jim Jules has it perfectly. Yeah, COVID put a year delay at least on it you couldn't get anything done last year so we had our our windows put in our hurricane windows were put in in march of this year but we ordered them in october so that's november december january february we waited five months for those windows to arrive because the window company um, advised me that because of COVID, they had a hard time getting a lot of their Spanish employees to show up. Now, I don't know if many of you have noticed that you'll see a lot of people wearing masks still who are Spanish. And a lot of the Spanish are very afraid. At our church, we have a Spanish service, and the pastor there um, was having a lot less people at his service because they're just too afraid to go out. And then we had a, our paver brick driveway was done last month. And I, I inked the contract in January, and we waited 12 weeks for my pavers to be custom built. So, yeah, you can see why there were so many delays going through last year. And Carol Long says, it seems the association board was different in 2020 compared to 2018. And I believe that was probably, I haven't read through all of their monthly uh, board meetings yet, but it was probably due to those core samples that were taken last summer. I think that's when they did them, and it probably alarmed uh, the engineering firm Morbido. It probably they probably really um, told them what was going on. 
And I think once they saw how much more has to be done now and how the price flew from $9 million to $15 million, million, they were probably like, oh, we better get to it now. Somebody told me yesterday at a condo they had up in Michigan that um, they whatever the assessment was for the damage that was so bad at their place, it was more than the value of each individual unit. That Can you imagine your assessment being more than the value of your unit? I mean, man. And we have another super chat that came in. Let me see if I can find it. It was right there. Musical Gamer, $6.99. Thank you so much. He said, please read. There were more than four security cameras cover the pool deck as well as the cameras in the garage. Yep. And Musical Gamer, if you, you should see the video we uploaded this afternoon. That's where I talked about all that. I showed the photographs of all of the cameras, except for in the, the garage, because it was in the video yesterday that we uploaded there. And then I think there was another one that came in. Wait, somebody said something about the news. Where did all the water come from on the ceiling in the garage? Says Simka777. Well, if you look at that video from yesterday that we walked through the garage with that lady's video, frame by frame, you'll see it because you'll see me plotting it onto the graph, onto the parking lot map. And a lot of it, most of it, I think, came from that little parking deck when you drive into the building there's a little parking deck with 20 spaces up top on the same level as the pool and the pool and part of that deck collapsed like that okay and so that's where the engineer was suspecting that there was no waterproofing put underneath the deck and i have to go and read the reports a little more and check out some other to see if that i can corroborate that information to see how true that was but it makes sense to me because a lot of those spaces there were particularly, um, what space number? Was there a lot of that in? Uh, you'll see the map that I put there in the, is it on here? Do I have that picture? I don't have it there. Don't have it there. I just don't have it right now. But yeah, there was quite a few of those in there. So certainly quite dangerous, I think. Um, <clears throat> why they never really brought in an engineering firm before to solve the problem, I don't know. Because I don't know if, how many of you know what happened, but they had a previous manager of the maintenance there back in the 95 to 2000. This guy worked in there. And he said that they used to get a lot of seawater coming into the garage, which I don't know how he knows it was salt water. Maybe there was... I just don't know. But I wanted to know what made him convinced that it was. And he said when they had king moons that you would get more water coming in. But they had two sump pumps in there that he says couldn't keep up. And they would burn out every year. They had to replace the pumps just to try to keep up with it. So I would like to know where that water was because I didn't see it in the garage in this lady's video from last year. And Mr. Fahrenheit says, I read that based on the photos, there is half as much steel in the columns as required by design. Yeah, that makes sense to me because, like I said, I would see two rebar coming out of those 16-inch columns when I would be happier with four. And now they have, I'm pretty sure they must have had these methods back then, but they have a different way now of tying the slab into the column with your rebars, okay, to prevent that punch through shearing and the way you can tell that punch through shearing is next time you see any pictures that are somewhat close up at the bottom of the pool deck where it crashed next to the cars look at the top of the columns they're not straight they look like this they fan out and what you're looking at there is a mushrooming type effect that's the part of the slab and that's how it breaks on a punch through it breaks at an angle on either side and uh, so it was pretty obvious to me the first time I saw those pictures exactly what happened. It's a classical textbook photograph of a punch-through shearing failure. And Carol Long says, why didn't the condo have funds to cover the cost of repairs in 2018? Because no condo is going to have $9 million in the bank. It's just not going to happen, you know. So so, so here's, the, here's how the condo law in Florida works. The Condominium Association is supposed to keep a budget every year, 
And usually it's better when there's a management company running it. And they're supposed to tell us how much we have to pay every month for the, for the dues. And those dues are normally, on our ideal situation, they're normally supposed to help. Part of it goes into reserves. Now, the problem is, is when you get a major assessment like this, the, the homeowners can all decide not to do it. <clears throat> they have to have a, a vote, and they can all vote to not do it. And you can also vote to not fund the reserves, which I've seen them do at one of my condos. And so the only problem is, is when you don't fund the reserves, the minute a major repair comes up, there's an assessment. The minute a roof repair comes up, it always ends up being about $5,000 per unit. That's the problem you run into. Some people want to, some condos want to run, okay, well, well, we don't want to do away with the reserves altogether, but we want to just contribute a little bit each month. Well, there's some strange laws in the state, I think, that you, it's like all or nothing. You either have to do a reserve at a certain amount or you don't. And I don't know if that's changed recently or not, but yeah, I mean, um, so definitely COVID delayed everything for sure. And it, it, it's just, I'm just frustrated thinking about it because I know that they were actually working on it now. And in fact, they had a pool contractor. You guys have probably seen those pictures and I had it in my other two videos pool contractor came in 36 hours before the, f the failure and took pictures of some of the water leaking in the pool room that he didn't like <clears throat> and some spalling on the ceiling in there but that wasn't the cause of it it was too far away from the collapse and the pool itself survived the collapse so we know that wasn't it but the pool guy and i wish he had gotten pictures said he saw a lot of water on the garage floor at space number 78 so when you go and you look at my garage video from yesterday, you'll see where I'm talking about it on the map. And that is exactly where I think the roof uh, caved in. But we're going to show you photographic evidence tomorrow of that. Uh, hope, hopefully tomorrow. Um, so I would think, you know, 40-year plan is fine. But I would think every two years, you know, bring in, pay a couple of grand or something to an engineer to come in, structural engineers, and just have them look at your building. Is there anything wrong? Do you see anything that you can catch it super early? Okay. And let's see any other questions. And Dean says, uh, I've seen a couple of dozen things on the news that proved to be untrue. Yeah. And is the planter box above space 78 there is one there but if you look closely at some of the aerial photos or look at some of those drone shots the, the drone videos on on youtube most of those planters survived so i don't know if it was a planter issue remember the planters have drains in them too and we're going to be showing you some of that i think in that video tomorrow where we think there there's a pipe from a drain from a um, planter coming in there and yeah so yeah like nerdy mr a says the the hammers if you look on the video description below the little hammer icons represent each one of those is the tools that we're giving away and we'll add the ryobi one later there and brandon thibodeau just sent a five dollar super chat thank you for that brandon he says tragic and unfortunate event how long were you out there jeff i entered the drawing hopefully i'll win something i've never won anything in my entire life so I was out there for about uh, five hours. And it's normally a 40-minute ride for me, but it took me two hours and 30 minutes to get there because of all the traffic in the area, and they were rerouting everybody. And I had to find a... I, I had searched online on the satellite photos the night before and found a good public parking lot about five, six, seven blocks south of the building and i had to lug all my gear there but yeah so i was there for about five hours just till around at the time that it got dark captain joe says so who's going to be responsible i don't think they'll know until all of the testing is done and they come up with a f forensic reason why was it the architect's fault was it the builder's fault the builder's dead the architect is likely dead this was I mean, these were all designed back in the mid 70s and keep in mind there's a sister carbon copy of this um towers three buildings north that uh is it's basically the same copy floor plan 
and their building's fine. They had some cracks in their garage, but they fixed them. And from what I read, the scuttlebutt from people like neighbors in one building that knew friends in the other building, et cetera, they were all saying, hey, here at the North Tower, we fixed stuff. Whenever stuff gets done, you know, we fix it. And, and their grounds overall looked nicer and everything. So I think that's why that building is doing okay. And then maybe whatever the root cause is, like did the builder forget to put the uh, the waterproofing underlayment under the that parking deck up on the ground level? If they forgot to, who knows? You know, maybe one building got lucky and the other one didn't. There's just so many unknowns here right now, folks. The only thing we know is, look, at the, at the end of the day, the root cause is... <clears throat> Somehow a column collapsed, which causes other columns, you know, maybe we think two or three may have failed at once. And then about two to three seconds later, the other two failed. And then once those five fail, you're you're done. Forget about it. Um, the real root cause is God created man. At the end of the day, folks, that's it. You know, people never really go back far enough to solve what was really the true root cause. But <laughs> the true root cause is God created man. And man was arrogant in this case and thought he could tame concrete and rebar. And something went wrong somewhere along the way. But, man, you can bet there's going to be a huge learning. And I bet this will be, I hope it's taught in the engineering schools. One of the first things they taught us when I got into engineering school was if you design a bridge that fails, you had better be under it when it does. And, by the way, if you guys have never heard of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge... You got to go look that up on on YouTube here after uh, we close up tonight. It's called Tacoma Narrow Tacoma Narrows Bridge, and it was in Tacoma, Washington, and it was a bridge built in the '50s. And this thing was swinging like a like a ribbon, and it was just unbelievable. Luckily, nobody got hurt because they closed it off, but they got video of it dropping and collapsing into the water. So that's a good one to check out. And <clears throat> let's see. Some people think that it was the work being done on the roof, but no. The the roof was inspected 14 hours before the collapse by the city roofing inspector. He said he didn't see any red flags. And really, it's it's almost impossible for roofers to cause a problem because the roof was already there. They're not doing any, there's no massive heavy equipment up there. They bring up a bunch of rolls of membrane and roll it out. Big whoop. So I don't think that they caused anything there. <clears throat> And Jerry Karolchuk says, Jeff, thank you for your information. Very interesting stuff. You hold true info. Yeah, and thank you, Gene, who says, great job, Jeff. Amen. And so um, I'm going to probably close out now. So if anybody has any other questions, get them in right now. And Dan Meyer says, where's the Ryobi fan? Like, we're going to add that, like, as soon as I get off here. I'll find it. I'll, give, I'll need about five minutes to to post the link together and I'll get it in there at the, uh, with the other links there. The musical gamer says, Jeff, do you think they didn't think about if one column fails, will the other building still stand? Well, there are beams there. There is a beam schedule and they're supposed to like maybe help a little bit. And I'm going to point out in the video tomorrow that there was one beam in the garage that I didn't like the way they did it. And I'll tell you why. In my opinion, a beam is supposed to go on top of a column, right? And from what I could tell, this beam was at the side of a column. And that's a no-no. That's a shearing failure waiting to happen. It's begging to happen. It's like when you build a staircase and you have that landing there. I've seen it where your landing is here, and people will take the riser from the floor and, and come up and screw it into the side of it, which is improper. Because now your load is on four screws or nails when that riser should be under that landing you see the difference there this is a much better way to carry the load to ground than putting the beam or the other support member at the side big difference guys yeah tacoma was a cool case of resonance so all of that stuff is all done by computers now and everything why was the building able to withstand hurricane ivan every building is florida B building codes um, I think back in the 70s and 80s, it used to be like 110 or something miles an hour. But after Hurricane Andrew, they beefed it up. A lot of buildings, if they're concrete and steel or rebar or whatever, 
uh, generally will do pretty well anyways. And Zoom Truth sends a $5 super chat. Thank you so much for that. And says, did the original collapse not look like a controlled demolition? It's easier to fool someone than, yeah, yeah, I know, blah, blah, blah. No. And I'll tell you why. Because nobody reported hearing the multiple charge explosions that you would hear in order to bring a building down. And and they are loud. In fact, we're going to do a debunk video on that coming up this week. And I have the video of when they actually demoed the remaining part. And it was loud. It was filmed from four blocks away. And four blocks away, it was loud. It's like hearing multiple M80s go off. And it's an unmistakable sound. If any of you have ever been to Vegas or seen them doing these controlled implosions, it's an unmistakable sound. And you can hear it on these videos. And I can assure you that if that had really happened, there would have been people all over Miami Beach there calling 911. It wouldn't have just been the security guard. <clears throat> What do you think is going to happen to all the old buildings in Surfside? Well, they're going to start inspecting. In fact, uh, Surfside sent a, a letter out to all of the building owners last, I think last week, asking them, hey, would you mind doing a 30-year inspection now instead of 40-year? You know, you know, why wait? You know, hop on it now and just take a look, you know, see if there's anything wrong with your building. So I'm willing to bet this engineer and probably all the other engineering firms are going to be loaded with work now. That they won't have enough uh, time to handle all of the business now. And Captain Joe says, "So oh, that was a, yeah, that was his question. Yeah, if I custom build, I want to hire you. Well, I'm not an expert in custom building a, a building like that or you know doing those foundations. What you really need is a structural engineer who who has a lot of experience designing those things, and they're using computer aided design now, and they're probably going to do columns that go like this." and have big wide caps on them up at the top, which help fight that pattern of the punch through that I showed you. Remember how the slab cuts off like this and it looks like a mushroom top? So Lama says, any thoughts on the insurance companies getting off paying? Yeah, see, that's what I'm wondering. You can bet they're gonna try to say, oh, architect screwed up. Nope, we're not covering it. Unless there's some something in the contract that forces them to pay but yeah i i encounter friends all the time who get leaks in their bathroom or whatever and um the insurance company refuses to pay i've had to go in into um elderly ladies the, the 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 widows from our church i had to go into their places when their insurance company does comes and does a four-point inspection on their property and they find a flexible uh, p trap under the kitchen sink and twice i had to go in two different ladies because their their insurance company was going to um can them so yeah that's a, that's a big problem guys insurance companies don't pay when i see these commercials on tv that from these insurance companies that try to make it look like they're your best freaking friend in the world i know they're just lying through their teeth because i've had to go through insurance companies and, and do claims before and their first answer is no I don't care what the commercial makes it look like. We've got your back. Their first answer is no, 100% of the time. And they make it sound like, oh, we have these customer advocates that we have on staff here for you. They're paid by them. They're not going to help you. So those are all the things to keep in mind. And Matty Matt, 80, gave us a 499 super chat. Thank you so much for that. It says, any, any evidence the Shearwells could have served as a possible form of refuge? They went down with the ship, man. That was the thing. Um, the one that would have helped, and that's the one that other people escaped down, was the one on that sheer wall next to the elevators. So that's the one that some people escaped out of. But <clears throat> when you have a pancaking building, guess what? Stairwells are going down with it. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I look at the power and I watch the, the, the videos of it dropping and I try to figure out what's the safest spot to be and the only thing i can think of is being out on your patio on one of those two upper levels you know um and that's your best chance of surviving that mess and brn says can do you have an email address i can send you the more abito stuff well i probably have it but um you can find me on facebook and just message me there 
And yeah, Galloping Gertie, Berlinda. That's what they called the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. They nicknamed it the Galloping Gertie. Forgot about that because it, it's short for girders. You know, the girders are Galloping Gertie. And uh, Jerry Jacobs just sent a $20 super chat. Thank you so much for that, Jerry. And, yeah, and the insurance guys will call it Act of God. Well, maybe they can. They'll try. They'll always try to use it. It's up to you. But, you know, people are going to sue. The families are going to sue anybody and anything with a dollar sign in the bank account, with a penny in the bank account. Um, that's just the way it works, you know. And Junior Vasquez says, hey, Jeff from South Texas, what did I miss? Dude, you won the Ferrari, but you weren't here, so we had to give it away. Oh, too bad. Uh, Captain Joe says, thank you for your time and your awesome investigation. The best so far. Well, cool. Well, listen, guys, I want to make sure that if you guys had a question that didn't get answered um, on this video, ask it in the in the uh, comments here on this video. Don't ask it on the other three videos that are getting boatloads of traffic because the comments are coming like this, boom, boom, like one after another, and I'll probably not even see it. I gave up trying to answer questions on those other three videos because the one has three and a half million views in only six days. The one we put up yesterday is at 350,000 views, so we just can't even keep up there. And Mo says, Jeff, the safest spot is not being anywhere near the building. That is right. And Zoom Truth sent a $10 super chat. Thank you so much. He says, can you believe family found their grandmother's birthday card in the rubble? Yeah, they showed that on the news the other day on Channel 10, our local news. <clears throat> the FBI found terrorist passports in the rubble. I doubt that. That sounds like nonsense because the FBI isn't searching the rubble. So right off the bat, I believe that to be rubbish, rubbish. And I didn't hear it on the news, on the real news either. <clears throat> and by the way, guys, I was working on that, that video we launched today. I was working on it till 530 this morning. So I'm going to get some really good sleep tonight, folks. So I think, make sure we got everything. I think we got everybody covered. JT Thompson says, I am still missing. There you go. And there was that other story that came out. I don't know if you guys heard that, That's that where this family says, look, my, my mom or grandparents' phone keeps calling me from the rubbish pile there at the, at the, the, at the, you know, the debris pile. And that would be 100% impossible because, it, first of all, they said it was the home phone because... The power was cut to the building within an hour and a half by FPNL. I was listening to the police scanner audio during all of that. And Kelly Mesh sent a four ninety nine super chat. And Kelly says, don't have a question. Just love watching your videos. Keep up the great investigating. Well, thank you so much for that. And Zoom Truth again says, I met, oh, the rubble of WTC on 911. <clears throat> I don't even know how they would have found it. I mean, there was just, everything was pulverized. So I don't I didn't hear about that. I don't know if that happened or that'd be interesting to look into. And I like that. Jim Jewel says you're the GOAT greatest of all time. Okay, so anyway, thank you guys for joining us tonight. I know we ran a lot longer than we normally do. Um, but I know there's a lot of questions that people have about this collapse. And we're trying to answer them as much as we can. And I take in a lot of comments from a lot of other structural engineers out there that, that know this kind of stuff um, a lot better than any of us do. And I you know, just try to make some sense out of it, parse it to the building, you know, make everything jive from 100 different angles to make sure that we have what we think is the truth and then try to disseminate it in a way that's easy to interpret it and understand it. And, yeah, John McCree says, great call, making it over 200,000. Yeah. So we just hit 200,000 subscribers the other night. And I think because of the amount of attention we've been getting from all these videos this week, we, we're, we're going to hit probably 212 tonight. And Zoom Truth says, thanks for reading my super chats. You betcha. All right, guys. So we're going to sign off here. And um, remember, we'll reconvene next Sunday night at 8 p.m., and I will draw all of the winners' names randomly live. And you don't have to be present. You, you know, we'll just email you when we're done. But Oh, and by the way, there was a guy in the last giveaway. He actually won two 
items. He he won. Uh, I don't see it. He won the other um, the ratchet reg set, and he won the Milwaukee cap. And he didn't answer my emails. And finally, last night, I gave him one last chance, and he answered me. So thank God he's getting his stuff. But listen, if when we email you guys, respond back as immediately as you can, so we can try to get all of the tools together and ship them out at the same time. I don't want to make five trips to the post office over five days because people take too long to get back. Make sure your email is correct when you enter your email address. Make sure it's not an old Google Plus email, which a lot of you have on YouTube, because it will bounce and you'll win the thing and then we won't have a way to contact you. So those are the things you want to check there, okay? And how much gel do I use in my hair, says JT. Actually, none. I, I don't have any gel. It's kind of like spiking up, yeah. That's just the way my hair is. Can I win the 4GT? <laughs> Ghost wants this. No, I'm not giving it up. Not a chance. Not a chance on that. All right, guys. So let me get over here and get ready to end the stream. Thanks. And we'll see you guys all next week. Check for our videos this week. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you are. And make sure you click the gray bell icon. Make sure that you're receiving alerts from this channel or you're going to miss all of the future tool reviews. You're going to miss all of these other great videos that we're uploading for you. So we'll see you next week, folks, 8 p.m. Be there. We'll see you. Mm-mm.